You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hello and welcome to episode 136 of the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey gang, once again it's your host Sean, back at you with another round of exciting adventures, life lessons, thought-provoking circumstances, witty humor, and other things. Sure, we'll go with that. Like I uh, talked about in previous episodes, it's all about radical honesty, and at least that's the attempt for this year. So, what I want to do, actually what I originally intended for the podcast before it started when I was just forming the idea was it was going to be every day so seven days a week uh, about five minutes per episode and it was going to be a roundup of that day's events what I had uh, experienced come across learned that kind of stuff but my life isn't always that exciting so I didn't think I'd have something to say every single day so I didn't want to start something like that go to this once a week format where I try to make episodes around 20-25 minutes. Sometimes they're longer, sometimes they're shorter. Just depends on what's on my mind this particular week. Well, remember last week? All those poems I read to you guys? Most of them were about Stephanie. Well, this weekend that just passed, we met up in Sudbury and we had an adventurous time. A great weekend. So gather round, kids. I'm going to tell you about the best weekend I've had in about 100 years. So are you ready? I hope so, because here it comes. Now, I might be overly dramatic, I might be silly, uh, I might be explaining things in dramatically flowery language. Maybe not. Depends on how it goes. If you're ready, we'll take a deep breath and we'll begin. All right, so the main thing I learned from the weekend is that the universe gives you exactly what you ask for, but in unexpected ways. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to tell you the story of the weekend that just was. It was Stephanie's birthday. It was her birthday weekend. I hadn't seen her since August, and a friend of hers wanted to do something special for her for this day, gather as many of her friends as possible into one spot, and just have a fun weekend. So... Friend Tina messaged me on Facebook uh, just before the new year, just over three weeks ago. Said, hey, would you be up for an adventure to meet Stephanie in Sudbury and gather around and just have a good time, fun weekend? Help her celebrate? I'm like, sure. And it was supposed to be a surprise party. So Tina and I messaged back and forth for a little while, a couple days, a couple weeks, I don't know what it was, but uh, we were trying to figure out how to arrange this whole thing, get everybody together, and have a fun time. It's complicated because people are from different towns, and maybe Stephanie was working that weekend. Who knows? So I I said to Tina, well, why don't you go ahead, tell her what we're planning, and she can help with the preparation and make sure that it actually happens. So she did. And the way it turned out was, uh, there was going to be five or six of us, and we were going to stay at a girl named Christina's house who is a friend of Stephanie's, and who happens to live in the Sudbury area. So at least we had a place to stay, and we were going to do bowling, and maybe some bar hopping, maybe some laser tag. We had a whole bunch of different ideas, play some pool, whatever. Whatever came up, just whatever Stephanie wanted to do was going to be spontaneous adventures. So we had it all figured out. We were supposed to meet at Christina's house on Friday. So I went to work that morning. I was going to take the day off, but I didn't. And wouldn't you know it, people who don't normally get mail, they got mail. So it was uh, one of those days where there's just everything against you, 
and it took me a while to get out of town. But I managed. The drive to Sudbury from Timmins was amazing. The skies were clear. The roads were bare. There weren't any. There wasn't any snow anywhere. Uh, hardly any traffic. It was very nice. So I pulled up to Christina's house after I found it. I had to use the GPS because it was in a way out of the way area of Sudbury uh, that I'd never been to before. So I got there. It's dark, but I found the house. And I walk up the stairs, and Tina and Stephanie are in Christina's house just waiting for me. And they'd only been there a, a short while. Uh, and it turns out Christina had things to do that weekend, so she wasn't able to actually be there. I didn't get to meet this lady, but she was kind enough to allow us the use of her house, which is awesome. So thanks, Christina. You rock. So I get into the uh, living room. They're both sitting there on the couch, and they had just listened to last week's episode all about how I was in love with Stephanie back in our university days. So if you haven't listened to episode 135, go ahead and do that, because that's a lot of good backstory. While you're doing that, I'm going to play a promo for another podcast here on the ESO Network. Hey, Geekazoids! The Metal Geeks Podcast is your source for all things geeky from the perspective of a couple of metalheads. And me, George. That's right, and George. This is Carrie the Metal Geek along with... Brutal Dave. And George Shripsis. Join us as we wax philosophical about our favorite subjects. Yeah, like what? Movies. And TV shows. Video games. Comics. Theme parks. And heavy metal. Join us on each episode as we discuss special topics. George hates metal. And find out what's tickling our little geeks. And much more. Come listen to us as we audibly age in your ear holes. You can find us on the social medias at Metal Geeks and visit us on our website at MetalGeeksPodcast.com. Keep it metal. Keep it geeky. And me, George! Okay, so... Now that you've listened to episode 135 and you've heard my poetry and how funny and witty I can be about certain things, I can continue the rest of this story. So I get there, they're all smiles, we hug, uh, we take selfies, I, I finally meet Tina for real life, we uh, sit and chat and uh, get to know each other, and we have some drinks. Actually, before we had the drinks, we went to a restaurant, I think it was called the Firehouse or the Fire Hall or something, and had some great food, and had a lot of laughs, and had a few drinks, and then we walked back to the house, and had some more drinks, had some more talks, just talked about anything and everything. Just getting to know Tina as a person, reconnecting with Stephanie, and just having a good old fun time. So that was Friday night. And then on Saturday, what did we do? Well, we got up, sat around, watched some TV, talked, listened to music, got to know each other better, and then um, Terry showed up. And Terry is a girl that I met 12 years ago when Stephanie and Terry came up to Timmins for a visit. Stephanie and Terry used to be a couple. Uh, I think they broke up maybe two years ago, roughly. I, I don't know the exact time frame, but they were together for about 10 years. And they've remained friends and close and which is awesome, because sometimes you can remain friends with somebody you've been with before. And they have managed to do so. Congratulations. That's awesome. That sounded uh, sarcastic, but it wasn't. So anyway, uh, the plan was that we were going to all pile into Terry's van, and uh, they were going to take Tina and I on a tour of Sudbury, because uh, Stephanie used to live in Sudbury. Right now she's in the uh, Bracebridge area, around where uh, Tina lives. So they, they, that's how they met last year. So we went on a tour. They were, she was a pretty good tour guide, actually. Terry, if you're listening, you rock as a tour guide. Uh, she showed us and told us about all the various sketchy areas of town because she works with uh, disadvantaged people, people who need housing, that kind of thing. I'm not sure exactly the details of what her job is, but she sees a lot of things. So she showed us uh, all the places, all the houses where the rats are infested, all the bed bugs are, and the forests where you don't want to go into because there are a lot of needles. So if she was trying to entice us to move to Sudbury, she wasn't doing a good job, but maybe a good job because we know where not to live if we go there. So we laughed about that. And we, we drove around and we tried to get up as close as we could to the infamous Sudbury smokestack uh, because they're known for their, their smelter and whatnot and all the pollution and stuff. 
So we got as close as we could up to the smokestack, and then we got stuck. That was fun, because there was a blizzard actually that day too on Saturday. It snowed about six to eight uh, inches of snow, and we couldn't see anything for most of the time. But we were driving around anyway, because we're crazy like that. So we got stuck, and we tried rocking the van back and forth, but the, the van was hung up on a snowbank that we didn't see because of the whiteout conditions. So we tried digging it out, and all she had in her van was one of those snap-together plastic shovels, and it worked for a bit until I obliterated it, and it just kind of disintegrated in my hands. Uh, but luckily, she had a towing service, and Bob's Towing came to the rescue. Thanks, Bob's Towing. You're a real swell guy. He uh, pulled us out, rescued us, and we were on our way again. Then we went to Toys R Us, and we finally made it to the restaurant before we went bowling. The place was called... Tecklenburgs? I'm not sure. It was some kind of uh, nautical-themed restaurant. Uh, so there was four of us, Terry, Stephanie, Tina, and me, and we had some fish and chips and other various things, and our waiter was hilarious. He was personable and funny and made us feel very welcome. So we had our dinner, and, and then we left, and we got in the car, and I, I said to the girls, I'm like, you know what? I'm not gay, and I've never considered this before, but if I was, that would be the kind of guy that I would go for. And we laughed and laughed. And the funny thing is, I've never thought that way before, but being around Stephanie seems to open a portal to another realm of consciousness. You hear that, Stephanie? You, you make me think in different ways, and it's always great to be around you. That was the thing. And we all laughed, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm just open to different possibilities when, when she's around. So then we went to the bowling alley where we played two games, and I won both of them. Not by a lot, but we had a lot of fun, had some drinks, and then um, we went back to Christina's house, the four of us, and we sat around, and we chatted, and we hung out, and everybody was filled with smiles. And I wish I could describe the smiles on these girls to you. It was, it was Sean and the girls, lots of fun, but the only way I can think of to describe these girls' smiles is... They're the kind of smile that would break your heart if you're brave or foolish enough to open your heart to it. And what do I mean by that? Uh, just such a genuine, fun weekend. Absolutely amazing. And actually, there was, there was supposed to be a couple more people, too, uh, at the bowling, but because of the blizzarding conditions, not everybody could make it. So there was only the four of us instead of six or seven, which, uh, which was sad because uh, Stephanie was hoping for uh, a bigger gathering, but... Not everybody can travel in the blizzardy conditions, and there was so many uh, tow trucks out and and police vehicles and, and everything that uh, it, it wasn't really that safe to go out. But we had a lot of fun, and we got to know each other, and I got to reconnect with Terry, who I'd only met once 12 years ago, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, and then she went home, and so just uh, Tina and Stephanie and I hung out for some more, chatted, had some more drinks, uh, ate some birthday cake. A Dairy Queen birthday cake, which is awesome because we don't have a Dairy Queen here in Timmins, so I do miss that. So that was fun. And then uh, we went to bed. And so the next day was Sunday, and we had a lazy Sunday morning, and just hung out, had some coffee, talked, listened to music, nothing really special or major, just uh, spending time together. And then we went out for brunch before we went our separate ways. We listened to music in the car, and for whatever reason, the weekend was just so good. Like, there was nothing specifically special about it, but it was just so nice. The, and, and nice isn't even a good word for it. It was so pleasant. And, and the music on the radio uh, was just cutting into my brain, and every moment I just tried to capture and slow down, uh, because I was having such a good time hanging out with dear old Stephanie. And the funny thing is, re looking back at it now a few days later, I realized that I think Tina and I connected as well on, on, a, on a pretty cool level. Um, and Stephanie was right because she thought, you know what, when you guys actually meet, uh, you're going you're gonna to get along famously. And she was right. And we just had so many good conversations, the three of us, and it's been so long since I've had that level of uh, intimacy in just a, a, an informal, non-romantic chat that 
it was it was a great time, and I, I can't even describe it properly. The fact is, Tina and I connected in a way that is rare. Like, Stephanie and I connected back in university, the same similar kind of way, just one of those deep soul connections that are so rare, they only come along periodically. Uh, you have to be open to them, and, and maybe they're always there, but we can't recognize them for whatever reason. But looking back, yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 she's the kind of person that I could just say anything to and didn't feel any judgment or anything like that. So it's just, just awesome to, to meet people like that because you don't often do that. Or if you do, you, you can't recognize it or whatever, whatever I'm trying to say. Uh, the funny thing is, though, previously, la, let me see, about uh, two or three weeks ago, my buddy Renee kept saying to me, uh, because he knows what a disaster my life can be at times, because uh, I've known him since the, the late 90s, and, and he's seen me through a lot of relationships and whatnot, and he's always trying to help. And he said, Sean, what you need to do is write down a list of all the qualities you're looking for in a partner. I'm like, mm, yeah, okay, I'll get around to it. And the next time I talked to him a few days later, he's like, did you make your list yet? I'm like, no, I didn't make my list. And so this went on for a few weeks. And so finally, early last week, I made a list. And then wouldn't you know it, I get to Sudbury, meet this Tina girl in person, and realize she has all the qualities that I'm looking for in a woman as a partner. And it would be awesome. Uh, then I realized, oh, well, guess what? Uh, the only things I didn't put on my list was local and single. So, like I said at the beginning of the show, the universe gives you exactly what you want, exactly what you asked for, but it will give it to you in unexpected ways. So, here's a person who you would get along with famously uh, and have the best relationship of your life, but it's not going to happen because you didn't specify that she had to be local and single and available for you. So, haha, that's the universe playing tricks on you. And it wasn't until, well, I got home Sunday night, and it wasn't until probably Monday, as I was delivering the mail and walking and just thinking about the entire weekend, that I realized that we had, had made such an amazing connection and that she had all these qualities that I was looking for. Because that's not what I went to Sudbury uh, looking for or expecting. Uh, in fact, I made the list and set it aside and didn't think about it again. And maybe I can read that list to you guys and girls. One of these days, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a pretty general list of important qualities that a partner should have. I don't have it with me right now. It's downstairs. But anyways, uh, just different things that uh, happen and make you go, hmm, okay, okay, universe. Uh, and so maybe because I made the list, the universe is showing me that there are people out there exactly how I'm looking for them. Um, not Tina, obviously, because she's married with kids and lives about seven hours away, so that's not going to happen. But it's a connection that you make so rarely, um, it kind of reminds me of the connection I had with uh, the ex-wife and various other people throughout time, but it's not a connection you have with everybody, and it's rare, and it's special. So I just thought I'd acknowledge that, and I'm not even sure why I'm telling you guys this, but I did say uh, this is the year of radical honesty. So what is the life lesson for this week's show? Uh, just be open to the possibilities of existence, and you never know what you're going to find. I guess that's it. I don't really know what else. But I've said too much, or maybe I haven't said enough. Couldn't tell you. But I'm going to leave it here. Uh, would love if you would leave a five-star review in the podcast store. Tell all your friends about the show. And uh, I'm just going to go hide in the corner now because I probably blabbed all over the place and I shouldn't have done that. But anyway, thanks for stopping by the Soul Forge. And remember, now we're supposed to go back to our normal lives. That's what people do. They have these amazing experiences with another person, and then they just go home and clean the bathroom or whatever. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Your support is greatly appreciated, and we hope you'll tune in again next time. Remember that you can visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links, and don't forget to share the show with everyone you know. The Soul Forge Podcast is your best source for living your best life. Think about it.
Hi, I'm Callum Rodia for Subway.com. Earlier this week, mining giant Valet made headlines when they announced that beginning in the year 2020, they will decommission and then dismantle the Superstack. The 381 meter smokestack, the second tallest in the world, has been an icon of Sudbury since the 1970s. And on our website, many readers express sadness that it may soon vanish from our landscape. To honor our sulfur spewing landmark, we dug up some old photos from the Superstack's early days. Take a look in this week's episode of Subbury.com's Throwback Thursday, in which, this being the year of Canada's 150th anniversary, we pay tribute to a little bit of greater Sudbury's history. In the middle of the 20th century, mining nickel in the Sudbury Basin was about as clean as it was safe. The process of smelting ore to extract the valuable metals it contained produced hundreds of kilotons of sulfur dioxide and other waste gases, contributing to severe damage to the local landscape. The chimneys used by both Inco and Falconbridge at the time were too short to adequately disperse the pollutants away from the city. By the 1950s, Sudbury had cemented its image as a barren, rocky wasteland. Inco began construction of the Superstack in 1970 on top of what remains the largest nickel smelting operation in the world, Coppercliff. The Superstack is 35 meters wide at the bottom with one meter thick walls. At the top, it is 16 meters wide with 25 centimeter thick walls. It has 937 tons of reinforcing steel buried in its concrete shell and a stainless steel liner that weighs 17,585 tons. At 381 meters high, or 1,250 feet, it was until 1987 the tallest chimney in the world and, until 1975, the tallest freestanding structure in the Western Hemisphere. The Superstack can be a bit of a polarizing structure. To some, it's a symbol of Sudbury's dark environmental history, when our landscape more closely resembled the moon than planet Earth. To others, it's a towering icon of our city that waves goodbye to you when you leave and welcomes you home when you return. Now, wherever you stand on the issue, one thing is for sure. Our landscape will look very different when the Superstack comes down. Thank you to the Greater Sudbury Archives and Valet for supplying some of the footage and images that you just saw, and thank you for watching. For Sudbury.com, I'm Callum Rodeo. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.